So remember last year when the Galaxy Note 3 came out and we didn't even compare it to the iPhone 5S? Well, that's because they were fundamentally different devices for about a billion reasons, not least of which was their size. Well, this year, things aren't so simple. Apple surprised us a few weeks ago by releasing a monster 5.5-inch iPhone, and that simple change puts it in direct competition with Samsung's newest Note. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's see how they stack up in Galaxy Note 4 versus iPhone 6 Plus, brought to you by Squarespace. Used to be that Apple was the king of all things fit and finish, especially when it came to Samsung comparisons. But the folks in Seoul have stepped up their game this year. As we explain in detail in our full Note 4 review, the newest Samsung phablet bears a chamfered chassis of aluminum magnesium with a polycarbonate leatherette back that recalls the expensive notebooks it's named after. It's thicker and heavier than the iPhone, bigger in every dimension except height, and its beveled edges are harsher in the hand, too. It's a phone that wants everyone to know it's not no sissy. It's a mammoth powerhouse, and you better recognize it. The iPhone 6 Plus takes a more subtle approach with its particular brand of big. It's more slippery, yet much more comfortable to hold and talk on thanks to the curves that dominate its build. With an all-aluminum fuselage and the attention to detail that Apple is known for, it feels like the more futuristic of the pair, but it also seems more fragile and maybe more prone to accidental damage. Aesthetically, it's not our favorite iPhone ever, either with its bold antenna inlays seeming out of place on this rounded hardware. Samsung's approach with the Note family is to see if there's a spec worth offering, and if so, to include it. Apple doesn't think that way, so the Note 4 has a quad HD display while the iPhone settles for 1080p. The Note packs a larger removable battery and micro SD storage expansion, not so with the iPhone. With the Note, you can control your TV or media center via IR, you can measure your heart rate and blood oxygen level, and you can draw on your screen or scroll like a mouse with the included S Pen. The iPhone offers none of that. If you're looking for features above all else, well, stop the video here. The Note is your device. But hold on. What Apple brings to the table is just as alluring to some people. Greater simplicity and a focus on tiny details that borders on the obsessive. There's a little switch on the side of the iPhone, and when you flip it, your system notifications are muted. The fingerprint scanner lets you just place your thumb to unlock the phone, instead of clumsily swiping across it. Apple's lightning charging cable is proprietary, but it's also reversible, so it's easier to plug in in the dark. Are these features elementary? Even laughably so? Yes. And they're also a part of the reason Apple has sold so many millions of iPhones over the past seven years. The software reflects these basic values as well. Rather than being endlessly customizable and often needlessly complex, iOS keeps things simple with a straightforward and familiar grid. Now, if you've watched enough of our videos, you know that not all of us are fans of that grid, which can feel a little like prison if you're used to tweaking everything on your phone. And on the iPhone 6 Plus, frankly, it seems even less justified. The most customization Apple permits is relocating folders and apps on your springboard, and even then you can't even choose where you want the empty spaces to be. Worse, every app takes up the full 5.5-inch display, and not many of them make terribly good use of that space. The Note 4, on the flip side, is kind of the poster child for intelligent use of screen real estate. First of all, you can arrange the display however you want. Mix and match widgets and icons, move folders and entire screens around, install a custom launcher, knock yourself out. Also with the Note, you can divide your apps into movable windows, collapse them into minimized icons, or drop two of them side by side so you can use each one at once. Using Samsung's S Pen Stylus makes this even more convenient at points as you can copy and paste text from one app into a neighboring one or drag and drop media from one place to another. That's a lot of functionality, and the reason the Note 4 doesn't win this comparison by a landslide because of it is because there's a big trade-off. The simplicity that Apple has perfected so well is nowhere to be found here. Multi-window is great, but it's complex, and it can still be temperamental and finicky even in this latest generation. The S Pen is very cool, but learning it takes time and effort, and even then it's not as intuitive as it could be. 
In our experience, the iPhone takes much less effort to learn to use, which is why it appeals to people who see their smartphone more as a means to an end. Once you remember to swipe up for Control Center and swipe down for notifications, you're pretty much golden. And hey, if you can't stretch all the way up to the notification shade, well, reachability can help with that. The Note 4's one-handed mode is cool too, and much more functional to be honest, but it's not as easy or consistent to trigger. You seeing a pattern here? At the end of the day, the software question comes down to the old iOS versus Android debate, an ecosystem choice that's much bigger than this comparison. To break it down succinctly, the iPhone sacrifices versatility for simplicity, capability for cosmetics, whereas the Note 4 does the exact opposite. The power gap continues across the optics, where Samsung's sensor offers double the resolution of the iPhones and many more special features in the software. Samsung has toned its option density down a little bit with the Note 4, but surprise, it's still nowhere near as easy to use as the iPhone's viewfinder. As for which phones and results you prefer, well, that'll depend on your preferences. Both cameras are quite good, and if you prefer more authentic tones, you might lean toward the iPhone's less saturated results. But there's no denying that Samsung's bold, vivid colors and higher contrast are big eye-catchers. Samsung's HDR mode is also much more adroit at pulling light from the darkness. Apple's doesn't seem to really do anything. And since both units have optical image stabilization, they each do well in low light, though we prefer how Samsung deals with the artificial tones thrown off by light sources like street lights. The Note 4 also seems less susceptible to lens flare, a complaint we also levied against the iPhone 6. Apple's A8 processor in the iPhone and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 805 in the Note are completely different from an architectural standpoint. Fortunately, we don't have to talk too much about that because insofar as most consumers go, none of it matters. Both devices adroitly handle processing loads from the benign to the extreme. Now, each one shows occasional stumbles in everyday interaction, which is surprising given the amount of power under the hood here, but no device is perfect. Testing on AT&T in Greater Boston, we found the iPhone to be the more comfortable device to talk on, both physically because of its soft rounded construction and because its earpiece favors clarity over sheer volume. Callers also said we sounded louder but less clear on the Note 4, with noise cancellation effectiveness about the same between the two. As for the speakerphone, we said in our Note 4 versus Note 3 comparison that we didn't like Samsung's decision to move it from the bottom to the backside and the iPhone 6 Plus demonstrates exactly why. Its edge-mounted speaker is just as loud as the rear-firing unit on the Note, and it also delivers a fuller, richer sound, despite having less space to work with. How long you'll be able to blast those tunes will vary depending on your use. For stamina, you really can't go wrong with either of these. They're huge phones, and they have commensurately large batteries. Samsung's battery is bigger, yes, but it's also got bigger power draws on the screen and probably the software. Still, the Note does take the endurance prize, thanks to the battery being removable and replaceable. And also, Samsung has its special ultra power saving mode available. And once you do exhaust the battery completely, the quick charger in the box can get you back up to 50% in a half hour, which is just ludicrously fast. Finally, you can bring down the brightness on the Note's display to almost nothing to save juice, which is also handy for reading in bed or texting in a dim restaurant without blinding your neighbors. Who says Samsung can't sweat the small stuff? Outside the most basic fundamentals, these smartphones are nothing alike, so the right buyer for each is easy to figure out. If all you're looking for is a bigger display and a longer-lasting battery on a straightforward but powerful smartphone, the iPhone 6 Plus is the better fit. 
It's got the more polished ecosystem and fewer hassles on the whole, and its software showcases the ease of use that's made Apple a household name. If simple isn't your bag, if instead you're a hardcore power user looking for the most raw performance you can fit in your pocket, or you're a productivity pundit in search of a phone more like a desktop than a mobile device, and you don't mind the complexity that comes with that, the Galaxy Note 4 lives up to its vaunted family name, and it's the better phablet for you. Either way, remember, you're getting an outrageously capable handheld. The only thing that makes one better than the other is how you plan to use that capability, and that, as always, is up to you. Once again, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this comparison was brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter offer code POCKETNOW at checkout. A better web starts with your website. While you're here, be sure to check out our Galaxy Note 4 versus Galaxy Note 3 comparison, and also see our full Note 4 review right alongside. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you that, as always, it's the motion of the ocean that really counts. We'll see you next time.